In the previous video, we applied the concept of carbocation stability to understand rearrangement reactions in organic chemistry, another important class of reaction in organic chemistry. And we said that the driving force for rearrangement reactions is that we're always going from a less stable carbocation to a more stable carbocation. So over here, we've got our list of different carbocation stabilities. Starting on the left, we've got methyl, and that's the most unstable as we go further more substitution we go from methyl to primary to secondary to tertiary becomes more and more stable so we're going to start in order for a re rearrangement to occur we're going to start with a less stable carbocation and going to go to a more stable carbocation and here's an example below where we start with a secondary carbocation and through moving this alkyl group this methyl group ch3 we end up with a tertiary carbocation and uh, the carbon 2 becomes a neutral carbon. So we're forming and breaking a carbon to CH3 bond. So in this video, what I wanted to do was just do some simple applications of rearrangements, just continuing the same theme and ask ourselves, in each case, is a rearrangement likely to occur? So let's just start with this first example here, this alkyl CH2. The first question to ask yourself when you're looking at a question of whether or not you're going to have a rearrangement reaction occur is just ask what type of carbocation are you looking at? And this carbocation here is a primary carbocation because it's only attached to one carbon, two hydrogens. The second question, if you know that or you're thinking that a rearrangement reaction might occur, is to ask yourself what is the carbon next door? So actually let's draw it down here. So the carbon next door is a secondary carbocation. Okay, and in a rearrangement reaction, remember that you're going to go from, we need it to be favorable, we need it to go from a less stable carbocation to a more stable carbocation. So what would we get if we rearranged one of the, so one of the groups on this secondary carbon here? Well, let's just take for, let's do things kind of the wrong way first. Imagine we were to migrate this CH3 group first. Now, what type of carbocation will we get from this? So CH2, and then we'd have a CH3 down here, and we would have these two hydrogens up here, and we'd be left with a carbocation. And this would, if we want to number everything, actually, that would be a good idea. So carbon 1, carbon 2, and carbon 3. And then carbon 2 would be primary, uh, and carbon 3 would no longer be a carbocation, but we'd end up with a primary carbocation in this case. So moving the CH3 would not be a good idea for, for our example. So let's try doing a different type of rearrangement. So let's just move it back a little bit here. So instead of moving the CH3, let's try moving a hydrogen. So if we move a hydrogen, or a hydride because it's taking the pair of electrons with it so sometimes we call this a hydride rearrangement we would obtain this CH2 and then we have a hydride or hydrogen attached to that carbon and the H and there would now be a positive charge on this carbon and ask ourselves what type of carbocation have we formed here well we formed a secondary carbocation so we've gone from a primary carbocation to a secondary carbocation. So this is definitely going to be favored. And note how when we migrated a hydrogen, this ended up being a favorable reaction. When we tried to migrate a methyl group in this case, um, it was not. So preferentially, helps to preferentially migrate hydrogen over alkyl in general. It's a good rule of thumb because a hydrogen is, is going to change it from, um, you're going to end up with a, uh, a more substituted carbocation in, in that case. You're always going to go down. So we have, to, uh, th this is a secondary carbon and it becomes a secondary carbocation. And this becomes, it a, starts off as a primary carbocation and becomes a primary carbon. Okay, so this would be a favored example of a rearrangement reaction. Okay, let's try a slightly different example. So let's look at, uh, try changing it to, 
imagine we had this. So benzene ring, and we're gonna have a carbocation here. And could we possibly have a rearrangement in this case? So first of all, again, we ask ourselves, what type of carbocation do we have? And this, in this case, would be a secondary carbocation because this carbon is attached to two other carbons. And in these examples, it might help if you drew out the hidden or implicit hydrogens because that makes it a little bit more clear what possibilities exist. Okay, the next question to ask is, what are the neighbors of our carbocation here? So in order for a rearrangement, you know, we're gonna be rearranging or moving a group from the, one of the neighbors. So neighbor number one is a primary carbon carbon. So now in private neighbor number two is a secondary carbon. Now neighbor number one, if we moved a hydride from carbon number one, we would end up with a primary carbocation. And of course that would be going from more stable to less stable. So that would certainly not be, we would certainly not want to do a rearrangement in that case. Now on the left here, we'd have a secondary carbon adjacent to a secondary carbon. So our first instinct might be to say, secondary going to secondary, that should be no change. That would, might be our first instinct. But I say question mark because there's some extra structural feature about this carbocation that's actually gonna give it greater stability. So let's just draw this out to make sure that you can see this. Remember, there's two key factors which stabilize carbocation. Uh, stabilized carbocations and the substitution pattern is probably the most important but there is a second factor which comes into play too and in this case if we move a hydrogen over so let's just draw it like here and let's say that here's our pair of electrons and say we've moved our pair of electrons here and have a hydrogen and a positive charge. Now again, how many, what type of carbocation do we have here? This is a secondary carbocation, but there's an extra feature in that it is also next to some double bonds. It's next to, it's adjacent to an aromatic ring. So this is actually resonance stabilized. So this is actually more stable. It's more stable. So this rearrangement would be favored because yes, we're going from secondary to secondary, but this is secondary, secondary allylic. So secondary allylic, allylic meaning that it's adjacent to a double. Actually, you should say secondary benzylic. I'm sorry, my mistake. You should call it secondary benzylic. So it's going to become um, more stable in that respect. Okay, so this is a favored rearrangement. All right, so finally, let's look at, see if we can fit it all in the same page. So here we have, let's have a carbocation here, and let's ask ourselves if a rearrangement can occur in this case. Again, ask ourselves a question, what type of carbocation do we have here? Well, it's attached to two carbons, so it's secondary. And then ask ourselves, what are its neighbors? Well, here it has a primary, and next door is a tertiary. And again, it might help to draw out the implicit or hidden hydrogens just to make things more clear. And we draw that out. And we ask ourselves, okay, so if we rearrange from the carbon next door, this would, on the right, this would give us a primary carbocation, which is clearly less stable than a secondary carbocation. So no no rearrangement could occur here. If we were to take a hydride from our tertiary carbon and move it over one, then we would get a tertiary carbocation. So that is gonna be more stable. So let's draw that one out. And here we have a carbocation and CH3 and hydrogen. And just draw this out in red, lone pair, and maybe draw that arrow there. So here's our hydrogen lone pair and that would be our product. And then looking at what type of carbocation we have here, this is a tertiary carbocation. So again, 
because we're going from a less stable carbocation to a more stable carbocation, this would be another favored, favored, carbo, uh, favored rearrangement. Now these are all examples of hydride shifts because we're always moving hydrogen. There are other examples, and we talked about one in the last video, of alkyl shifts. And I think in the next video, we'll start going through some different alkyl shifts and explore under what conditions those might be favored.